Well guys, we're going fishing and we're getting ready. Aren't we Thomas? Yeah. So Thomas is coming with me today and Thomas is hoping to catch a nice... A barbel. A barbel, yes. We're going to catch a barbel. We're really hopeful that we're going to catch a barbel today. There's been quite a bit of rain recently. So the river's up a bit and a barbel like I don't that. know, it's waiting outside right now. No. No, it's slightly. It's, it's just a wee bit damp out there. Yeah. So but it can be good weather for barbel though. It will be good weather for barbel. So um, see that um we can get our score today. Get our score. Session. We can get our score for this session. But that's our goal. That's yeah. our goal. A nice big barbel. Yep. So because we're gonna be targeting the barbel, we're gonna be using some paste. We need to add an, an extra bit of scent to the river because we're fishing during the daylight and the barbell usually switch on on the river ribble when it gets dark but there's a few little things you can do to get to better your chances and I believe one of those things is using a trusted bait and the source has always worked for me I've caught hundreds of barbell using the source um, the, the barbell just seemed to love it on the ribble it's a really good flavour um, we're not actually going to be using the boilie you'd be surprised to know what we're going to do is we're going to actually Put the boilies through the blender and that'll blend it down to a fine dust and then we're going to add some the source liquid and also some tuna and garlic liquid and this is like an oil and that's going to be added to the blended boilies to form a lovely paste that'll have a breakdown of about 25 minutes and that'll be perfect for a bite from a nice big hungry barbell so that's I'm so tired. fantastic he's a little bit tired because we were going to go fishing yesterday but the there was a lot of water coming down and a lot of weed because, as you know, it's been very dry. We've had months and months of, of no rain. So all that weed that's grown is now being washed through the river, which is good. It's what we want. It's being washed through the river, but fishing conditions are going to be very hard. There's been a lot of people down in the river and they're really struggling because as soon as they put their bait out, straight away they're getting covered with weed and it's just covering the hook bait. So we'll give it an extra day. We've just been sitting there itching and waiting to go fishing. Yeah. We've just come, we've been sitting here getting excited. And he, the, Thomas is just bouncing, waiting to get down to the River Ribble. Yeah. This is what I use inside the, the feeder. These are the feed pellets I always use and the barbell absolutely love them. They absolutely stink. I get these from a little fishing tackle shop Cut. in Beaudley. And it's, it's on Cut. the river. Chub. Yeah. Roach. Oh yeah, you catch carp, chub and roach. But you can get, but, it's, as you can see, it's a barbel product and the barbel, absolutely, they're tuned into the smell. It really works on the River Severn, but there's nobody using it up here in the Northwest. I don't know anyone that's using this flavor on the ribble, but the, the barbel, absolutely love it. I can assure you that I've been using it. That's actually, these are three mil feed pellets, but I actually use these as hook pellets as well, size 10 or size 14 on the hook and a lasso that on. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be wrapping those halibut pellets in the source paste and this is what I I just want to show you what I use when I'm clogging the feeder this is trout pellets which have been ground down into very fine dust morning that stinks yes well when something morning. stinks that's good because that's what the fish like mm. especially barbell they'll love a smelly bait I wish you could smell through the screen right now it, it, it does smell it does smell now what we do is you can actually get some you can actually get some trout pellets yourself and you can grind them in the, in your own blender but you can buy this stuff that's already been ground so it's just simple just to buy it that way but that's what we use in the feeder to clog it but now we're going to show you how we make our paste so we're going to put some boilies through the blender and make our own paste this is how it works you get your boiling now these are just shelf life boilies they're not they're not fresh boilies shelf life and that actually helps as well this actually helps whenever you're making paste because you can just have it in your bag and there's no need to refreeze it you can just have it in your bag and you can use it until it's gone because it's already got preservatives in it so get a handful of these and put them in maybe two, two generous handfuls should do the trick don't worry about that there we go so let's see, I think that, that's probably enough. So let's see if we can get these ground down into a fine powder. And make sure it's tight so it doesn't go like Ooh. What you want to do is put your hand on there to start with. So let's just pulse it to start with. As 
as you can see, My that gosh. done. My that's seconds. That took seconds. I think I'll just give it another. I'll just give it another oh ten or fifteen seconds. So that didn't take long, did it? Oh, thank goodness. So as you can see, we now have a fine powder. And all, all we need to do, oh, it absolutely stinks. All we need to do now is add some oil to that and that'll bind that together. So we can do that inside the blender. It doesn't take long at all. It takes like two or three seconds, guys. So here we have the source liquid. So we don't need very much of this, just a little squirt. And then some of our lovely tuna garlic oil. Give it a stir, because the, the oil likes to sit in the top of the liquid. Give it a bit of a stir. Drizzle a little bit of that in. That looks good. Perfect. It looks good. That's perfect. It looks so, like chocolate sauce, that. Yes, it does look like chocolate sauce. That's <laughs> so, why it looks cold. So here we go, let's give it a bit of a blend. Perfect. And there we have. Looks hot. Is it hot? Yeah, it's warm. Nice and warm. But I'll, I'll just show you now what we've got we're left with. Here we have a paste that can be moulded into a ball. Like so. And that all oh, that's perfect just to go around your boilies. And it stinks. It's Oh, that is going to be a brilliant edge for us today on the River Ribble. That's going to leave a big scent trail the whole way down the Ribble, drawing barbel up from hundreds of metres. Well, guys, <laughs> this is the finished product. And it absolutely stinks. Happy days. Have a smell of that, Thomas. Catch. Stinks. Whee! <laughs> So what I like to do is I like to keep that in a, one of these blue freezer bags and that just keeps it fresh. You can stick that in your coat pocket, just like that. Keep all the air off it. Happy days. down to the river and it was very dry 
but very humid and there was, it was close, we knew it was gonna rain and, and now it's raining right now yeah, guys yeah, it's absolutely starting I'm to hammer soaked. it but we don't care we, yeah, we only we just put two rods out the first rod went out about 60 seconds later we're in the chub there you go Thomas with the little chub isn't that lovely? yeah isn't it gorgeous? brilliant that's gorgeous <laughs> happy days happy days Tom yeah yeah. Put the second rod out. Yeah. About 60 seconds later, we're into another chub. Yes! I knew there was. I knew there was going to be a chub here. Yes! Oh. <gasps> On your hair wig as well. Perfect. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Look at the orange fins. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, yeah. That fish has never been caught before. I've never seen a hook in its life. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at how invisible it is from the, if you're if it's under the water. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So we've yeah. caught a chub on both rods. They're loving the source paste, aren't they? Yeah. They're loving it. So we're all set up now. We're gonna leave this video recording because I think we're just about to get another one. Yeah. Happy days. Happy days, man. So hopefully we can get him a barbell. Well guys, I can't believe it. My rod actually screamed off and I thought I was playing a barbell, honestly. It, the rod just, it was a flat liner. It was a flat line run picked up the rod and I felt this feels heavy and I was playing it and I thought it was a chub I thought it was a big chub oh, then I was getting these dull fuds and I thought this is a bream and anyway I've been rewarded with this beautiful fish and that is a proper river fish and it's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and I'm going to give it a nice big kiss I'm not kissing that are you going to give it a kiss Thomas? no I already did <laughs> He already gave it a kiss off camera, but he didn't like it. <laughs> but we're gonna get this straight back into the ripple. Take that little bit of straw off its back, Thomas. A little bit of straw. Good lad. We're gonna slip this straight back into the ripple and see if we can catch another one. Happy days. snag is in the river. That's a four pound fish, I'm happy with it.
with that and it's going straight back into the river. Isn't it gorgeous, Thomas? Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful fish. Well, what a session we are having. Unbelievable. Hasn't it been great, Thomas? Yeah. And it's not over yet. We came down with the intention of catching a barbel and we're not leaving because we haven't had one. What have we had so far, Thomas? Chunk and a um, bream. Dace. Yeah, he's had a dace. Chub and bream. We've had six chub. Six chub. The biggest one was four pound on the dot. And this, this rod hasn't stopped. It really has kept us busy up and down the bank, up and down the bank. It's, it's really been good exercise. Good exercise, you're telling me. It's been relentless. It really has, it's been great. He's puffed out there. It's the wonder paste. It's that paste. That's what's doing the business for us. I mean, we lost we lost two feeders. One feeder we lost because the chub took us into a snag. No, yep. And then the second feeder, got cr it got crushed in a snag when the chub took me in there. So we replaced that for just a tractor lead and we're just molding some paste inside the tractor lead and then putting a big dollop of the wonder paste around the hook bait. And that is the rod that's been doing the business. The pellet rod, the feeder rod has not really been doing much at all. Not from when our first- When we started. Well, when we first started, we were down at the weir and that, that's, that's the last time we caught a fish on that rod. We've moved up this to this part and we just haven't caught, caught a fish on that rod yet. But, I'm glad we moved here anyway. Oh, I'm so glad. It's been great. But anyway, it's getting to that magic time now. It's, I think it's half seven. It's 1937. So we've got about, probably about two hours before it gets dark. Um, yeah, it's getting a bit dark now. It seems to be getting dark early tonight because it's cloudy. Yeah. Um, which is good because we know it's only a matter of time before them barbels switch on. Yeah. But we've, yeah. we've just seen either a sea trout or a salmon. Jump. Yeah, because uh, I, I missed the uh, first uh, bounce, but I see the second one. Yeah, it, he missed the first one and I pointed in the direction and as, as I pointed, the, the fish come straight back out of the water, right up out of the water and straight down in. But I couldn't really tell if it was a sea trout or a salmon. It looked quite silvery though. But, um, it looks like a chunk to me though. Oh no, it was definitely a trout. Just tell by the streamlined body. But happy days. We're doing really well, aren't we, Tom? Yeah, it's just been a great session for today's episode. Yeah, I'm watching that rod like a hawk because it's... Yeah, it's going like that. I'll tell you something, though. It, it, it's every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes, we're getting the fish. Yeah. We're, either, we're either catching one or losing one. But yeah, we lose one, didn't we? We've lost a few. We've lost a few mm -hmm. today, so we have. Yeah. But I, I, I think we've had eight fish and we've lost, I think, three. So that's 11 fish we could have had today. Yeah. The fish we did lose, a couple of them were small. One was a decent one, but I'm sure it was a chub, just the way it swam straight towards that snag. And then it's lost it. catching nothing, eh? Oh, of course it is. We're loving it. We're absolutely yeah. loving it. It's fantastic. I think you're my new good luck yeah. charm, aren't you, son? <laughs> He's my new good luck charm. Happy days. Keep on catching. Think big, lads. Think big. Whoa. <laughs> Just had a bounce. Usually it's the barbel moving in, and the barbel are just moving in, and they're just all they're doing at right that, at that moment is the, their barbules are moving over the over the line, you know, because they're they're picking up little bits of food. So I'm hoping that the, that left hand rod's going to produce a barbel very very soon. And that was a lovely bounce, wasn't it, son? Yeah. Oh look! Oh, you see, look. That was a bounce again. Right, I'm getting ready for this now. So I'm just going to keep going. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come We came down for the barbell, we said as soon as it gets dark, we're going to get one. And 
it's not even just, it's just gone dark. Magic time. I was getting knocked on that rod. I was touch ledger and I had the rod in my hand. And then this rod screamed off and it's a barrel. Do you look at this beast? Lovely. That's only a wee one too and it gave me the good, such a fight that little one gave me. It's unbelievable. There's a barbie, you'll see them there. One, two, three, four. They're called barbules, that's where yeah. it gets its name, the barbel. And it's <laughs> only a little one and dairy mate, give me such a run around. <laughs> Perfect, surgically removed. Now look at all the size of that. Beautiful, it's the smallest barbel I've actually had in this stretch of the ribble. Usually, you're talking average six, six and a half, seven. So that's the smallest one I've ever, ever seen. And especially on this stretch. But it's so welcome. I just love this species. And I just wanted, I wanted Thomas to see his first barbel. It's beautiful. Is. Give it a kiss. It's not, no, it's not no. slimy. No, don't worry. <laughs> right, let's get it back. Isn't that great? As soon as the sun went down, got dark, we had that barbel. And now we've been rewarded with another River Ribble Green. This one's a bit slimy. It's going straight back. This is why I come in so easy, look. Had a little weed over, it, over its eyes. It went for an initial fast run, straight into a snag, and then the big clump of that weed, and then brought it with it. It came in real easy after that. Thomas says, like a true angler, we'll leave that rod in to last in the net. And I was just fixing the other rod, and this other rod screamed off with this chub. And it's just coughed up a load of my paste, so we know what it's been eating. And look at that. That's a beautiful bar of silver. Absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it lovely, Thomas? Yeah. That's gorgeous. But that's definitely fishing over for us tonight. Yeah. So that's what, seven or eight? eight. This is chub number eight. We've had a barbel, we've had two bream, and we've had a dace. We've had a fantastic day fishing on the River Ribble. We didn't have any monster barbel, but we could stay on if we really wanted to. But we're not. We're going to go home and celebrate because we've had that many different species yeah, today. We're exhausted. We're absolutely shattered. So I'm gonna say goodbye to this chub. Bye bye chubbos. You're going straight back to the ribble. Happy days. That's us finished. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, like comment, comment and share. And tap the notification bell. Hit the notification bell. And we'll see you guys next time in the next video. Bye. bye.